tell you what, this is absolutely killing me off. I have just slipped straight over. I'm pretty scared, to be honest. Honestly, this is not going well right now. Welcome back to another video. Another camping one, but a little twist this time. As you might have noticed, I'm by myself and I'm camping. So it's gonna be my first solo wild camp. And if you haven't already guessed, we are in Long Sleddale, just a bit outside Kendall. Really remote to get here. Just a little narrow road for about five miles. But we're going up Grey Crag, which might be that and Tarn Crag, which I think is that, and I think we're going to try pitch on Tarn Crag. Hopefully I'm going the right way, I'm already a little unsure, and it's about 10 to 5, so we've definitely got a good four hours to get up there before it gets dark. So let's get going. Don't know if we're heading for that. I'm not sure if that's a style or not, but it seems to be a bit of a path, and it is bloody steep up here. I don't know if you can tell how steep it is, but extremely steep. Definitely a bit unsure where I'm going here. Not feeling confident one bit, but keep going. And hopefully it works itself out, it usually does. I'll tell you what, this is absolutely killing me off. I've come up from just down there, so I've definitely done a couple hundred feet, but both mountains are 2,000 feet plus. And I'm absolutely knackered. Honestly, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't nervous for this first solo wild camp. When you're with your friends, it's completely different compared to just sat alone out here in the middle of nowhere. I'm most scared of when it goes dark and I hear random noises like sheep or birds. If you'd have told me three, four years ago that bit going on a wild camp by myself, I'd have said there's no way. But here I am. Sometimes in life, you just got to push yourself out of your comfort zone. That's exactly what I'm doing here. So this is what I saw from all the way down there. And it looks like it might be a style. How to get up here though? That is so steep. Let's go. This is a pretty big style. Like I'm really having to stretch to get up and with this backpack on, not an easy task. Now it looks like we've got nearly neck height fern to trek through. So hopefully I don't pick up any ticks from here. And there's nettles just hidden away in all this fern. Great. So this time I thought I'd wear my backpack and my bum bag before I set off just to see what I'm dealing with, see how much I'm carrying. And I'm not sure what most people carry when they're wild camping, but I've got 16 kilograms on my back and just over one kilogram on my bum. Oh, on the front, because it's not really on my bum, is it? I have just slipped straight over. Like I've just slid like pretty far down the hill. Oh, let's see if I can get up without falling. Jesus, my foot went from there all the way down there and I had my water bottle in my hand. My reactions were just to grab. So I grabbed my water bottle and I just squeezed it. So I just wasted a, a little bit of water right there. That's more like it. Lovely seat on this rock. Have a little couple of minutes break, catch my breath, recover from my fall and hopefully don't slip and slide anymore down the hill. Tell you what, this is definitely tiring. Beautiful though, absolutely amazing. What a lovely valley that is. I'm pretty sure that's Tarn Crag over there. So the road I was talking about that I came on literally comes all the way down that valley, it zigzags about. Hopefully we can actually get out of here because it looks like there's a corner there and I can't immediately see a way over so I have to hope there's a stile over there to get us over somehow otherwise we're going to be trapped. You can see the car all the way down there somewhere, just that little road. So we've climbed up a fair way. There we go, how a knight in shining armour or a style in a barbed wire fence. Oh, and it's wet. Just got splashed all up the back of my leg. Lovely. But I did read 
this can be a bit of a boggy walk at some point so we'll have to see how boggy it gets hopefully not too bad because i do not want it over the top of my boots as you can see getting off this style could prove a little difficult especially as the bottom step has completely fallen off so we're probably just gonna have to jump from the top step I didn't know if my legs were going to give way because I've got so much weight on my back. It is slow going off here. My calves are absolutely burning. Wow. So as you can see, it's definitely getting boggier, but so far, nothing that I can't avoid, so I don't mind. A little cairn here. I don't think it's the top of Grey Crag. I think that could be that one there. What a spot. It's quite good because you have views reaching out so far that way. It is definitely boggy, but luckily, it doesn't seem too bad. I can imagine it sometimes a year it gets absolutely like unwalkable, like up to your ankles, but it's not too bad at the moment. Honestly, it's just incredible that I'm out here and I've not seen a single person. I've seen some people down on the valley floor, but I've not run into a single person since I set off. And it just feels so good just to disconnect not see anyone like usually i'm with my friends it definitely is good fun going with your mates but going by yourself it just kind of it just feels different you're out here by yourself it almost does feel a bit surreal what a few that is looking back there wow just realized all the way in the distance you can just see ingleborough peeking out Definitely is a bit wet coming up here. Look at that for a view behind me. Absolutely amazing. In the distance over there is a lake peeking out. I wonder if that might be Windermere maybe. I believe that may be the top of Grey Crag. There we go. This looks like a summit to me. Which one it is, I'm not sure. Absolutely incredible. That's the Howgills over there. Ingleborough in the background. The edge of the lake is right there. You can see some of the big boys in the background. I'm not sure what these are immediately over the valley from us, but absolutely amazing. You can see from so far up here. So I've just checked, we are at Grey Crag, and that over there is Harrop Pike, which is actually one meter smaller than Grey Crag. But I'm just gonna push over to it because I reckon it'll only take half an hour, hopefully. One thing I'm a little concerned about is all the ground is like this boggy or wet mud i've not seen much firm ground at all so i'm hoping that somewhere on tarn crag there's a nice little spot with some firm ground preferably flat as well and it's definitely got boggy again i'm hoping it's not boggy all the way over there so as you can tell it's pretty wet it's not really that boggy it's just more wet. So I've tried to take a little shortcut and I do not like the look of this stuff. Honest, oh my God, my foot is like fully like nearly submerged there. Right, hopefully it's not as bad if we cut around the side here because that, I was just slowly sinking into it. It went fully on my toes. Luckily I've got waterproof boots. Right, this is certainly not what we wanted. A big muddy puddle and a fence. I think I should be able to get over this without causing any damage. So I'm going to give it a go. Look at that. Whoa. Just about, oh, if I'm much smaller, I wouldn't have made that. We're here, we've made it to this summit. Time to give it a tap on the head, because that's the only way to complete a mountain. There we go. And we can see Tarn Crag just over there. But we're gonna have to go all the way back there and then cut across it, I think. But great views, especially looking out, see them pretty steep mountains in the back. And as I said, you're right on the edge of the Lake District, kind of like in a corner, because you can see it goes pretty flat over there. And then also it goes pretty flat over there. So you're almost like on the corner of the Lake District. So there we go, that's Harrop Pike. Now just time for the final one, and time to get to our camp spot. So I've made it back to this corner of the fence, which is where I turned off to go to Harrop Pike. And you can just see, the final stretch which looks a pretty long way from here and this looks the boggiest section so far i cannot lie i think i did read somewhere stick to the side of this fence so i think i'm just going to follow it but this does not look clever you do not want to be going in something like that that is gonna 
ruin my night if I go in that. Oh my God. I'm looking down here, it almost looks like an apocalyptic bog. Like, uh, you're supposed to walk on these wooden bits. I'll go back to that wet stuff over there that I'll complain about, because this is just not good at all. Not good, but I'm just gonna have to hope that my balance does not let me down. Oh wow, it's like rolling as well. <gasps> <laughs> nearly, nearly. This is definitely going to take longer than I planned. I did not expect this kind of bog. I heard it was boggy and I thought, oh yeah, it's not too bad. We've been doing all right. Little did I know, we hadn't even reached the bog yet. See, this is the thing with bogs. You never know what's going to be firm and what's not going to be firm. So you're just kind of walking in and hoping that it holds your weight and your foot doesn't just sink deep into the ground. And we've gone from the muddy bogs right back to the wet bogs, just this time. They're quite a lot more wet. Oh my, oh my God, look at that. Look how much that moves. The whole ground, look at that. I don't know if you can see that on camera. <laughs> this is crazy. I don't know if you can make that out on camera. The whole, can you see the, the ground's like rippling like. I'm pretty scared to be honest. You can see uh, my foot were kind of deep in there. The ground rippled for about a foot radius, maybe more. This is honestly not good. <laughs> there's so much, like there's no avoiding it. I'm just going to have to go for it. Please hold my weight, please. <laughs> Thank God for that. I was honestly so scared. That one bit, I stepped on it. And the whole area around it was just started moving. It was rippling like water. I thought any minute, I'm just going to go straight through this and be up to my waist in it. Jesus, hopefully no more of that. So I've just got up there to go. Still a decent climb. Maybe a couple of hundred feet just over. But I'll tell you what, my shoulders are feeling this rucksack. 16 kilograms of weight. And I've not taken it off a single time since I started. The first time is going to be when I get to the top and find a pitch spot and it is going to feel so good. It only looked little but that were a fair pull up there. I think the top is literally just there, thank god, because I am tired and I am getting very hungry to be honest. It's just I am quite worried, are we going to find a camping spot? Like even up here it's still a bit boggy, so I'm just hoping we can find somewhere to camp. If you've ever walked a mountain you'll know that little burst of energy you get at the end. And you can just see the end, or I'm pretty sure that's the end, it better be. You just get that burst of energy for the final stretch. Feels so good. Look at that for an amazing view through there. That looks so good. I think that is the summit cairn right there. All I need now is that sun to come back out. I'll tell you what, I could be struggling here to find somewhere to camp. There we go. I think that's the summit, which is a bit undermined by this big surveying point. As you can see, it's still very boggy up here in places, which is not good, but hopefully I can find somewhere that's dry. There we go, that's pretty cool to be honest. Better than the cairn. But look at that, wow. What a view. Just incredible. But now it's time to find somewhere to pitch the tent which might not be too easy. Definitely as pretty cool as that. And the good thing is for people like me, sometimes I don't know whether I'm at the top or not, or if I'm at the correct top, but having something like that makes it definite. So now I'm definitely in the right place. If I had a choice, I would like a camping spot looking over there and down over the valley, but I'm not sure that's gonna be an option. To be fair, I've had a little look around and I've come back to this point. And I somehow missed this. This looks pretty good to be honest. It might be on a little bit of a hill, but as you can see, it's either very lumpy or very boggy. So this might be the spot. I've taken my bag off now and honestly, that is the best feeling ever. I probably had it on for a bit over two hours. Haven't taken it off once and it feels so good. I feel like 10 stone lighter. I've just had a quick run down here to see if there's any spots, but it doesn't look like there's anything. So I best get back up there to my bag. Honestly, this is not going well right now. I don't know how long I've been trying to get this tent up. At least 40, 50 minutes maybe. It's starting to get a bit chilly because the sun's going in. 
this is what we've got to i know it looks absolutely shocking it's like curved but the ground here to say we're in such a boggy area the ground here is rock hard as soon as you go about that far under the floor but like i've got a few pegs in but like some are just having to sit like this which i know is just not good at all but i feel like it's a bit too late to go trek across pack everything up and try find a new spot so i'm just gonna have to deal with it i would really try to put a peg in just over here pressed on it and i put oh that feels like it's gone somewhere i looked fully bent so i'm gonna have to deal with this the inside's not looking much better either it's the only time i've really struggled to get pegs in like a lot of pegs usually maybe like one peg's tricky to get in but as soon as i come by myself this is what happens there you go that's the peg that i bent nice so i've played around with it a bit i think i've got a tiny bit better it's definitely far from perfect but for getting size yeah it's not much better but it's a tiny bit better i think really i need more distance between this pole and that pole just to pull it all up a bit i've got my usual sleep soap well not my usual sleep soap actually i've lied i've got my rubbish cheap sleeping bag cheap sleeping pillow my uncle has given me this it's a thermo rest it's probably a reasonably old one but already it feels better than what i used to have i used to have a really bad one it feels more comfy and probably a bit warmer so i'll give you an update on how that is also this is the highest i've ever camped so this should definitely be interesting look at that honestly i've been so busy trying to get the tent up and worrying about it that i haven't been looking at the views this is my food for today salami grated cheese pit of bread sweet corn again if you know you know chicken soup that i took on my last trip but didn't eat got some chopped up chorizo and some red peppers in here and some pasta and then i've got some cookies in there for later i'll tell you what i keep turning around and i quickly i see that thing there and i'm not used to having something like that just behind me and i keep thinking it's a person there it absolutely makes my heart drop <laughs> I need to remember that in the night if I have a look out because that will scare me. There we go, that's the sun that I wanted. It's definitely not warm though because I am like 2,000 feet up so it's still a bit nippy. But that is just so good. I'm so glad that's come out even if it's just for a little bit. And I'm finally getting some food on. So it's nearly half eight and my first meal is nearly ready. There we go, finally got some food. Now time to enjoy this because I'm absolutely starving. So the sun has just sunk beneath the highest mountain over there. I'll see if we get a bit of a sunset. You never know, we might do, because it has cleared up quite a lot. But it is definitely getting chilly. Yeah, the way I've got this tent up is just absolutely shocking. It looks quite good looking out over there, and even better looking over there. Look at that. It's amazing. Best thing about wild camping, just the sunsets that you get and the sun rises. You can see the howgills over there and them clouds are just starting to go a little bit pink, which looks so cool. There you go, look at that. The tent don't look too bad from this side. The other side though, absolutely terrible. Honestly, it looks like it's like collapsed completely. So I'm just gonna watch this sunset and then get in the tent for the night. Honestly, I think this may be one of the best sunsets I've had while wild camping so far. The clouds over there just look such a nice colour. I hope the camera is doing it justice. But I best not get distracted too much because I'm cooking up my soup here and I don't want to burn it. There you go, I've got my pit of bread and chicken soup and a little bit of a sunset. So life's good. It just could be a bit better if it were a few degrees warmer because it's definitely a bit nippy up here. And there you go, that's the sun gone for the night. I think it's time to get in the tent now. So there you go, that's me in the tent for the night. Probably won't stay up too much longer. I'll wait until it actually goes dark outside fully. And then I'll probably just go to sleep, to be honest, because there's not much else to do when you're by yourself. Might as well get to sleep and then hopefully get up for a sunrise in the morning. Right, so it's about 11 o'clock right now, so I'm probably going to get to bed. I've still got loads of food left, to be honest. Like I always bring too much. I literally need about... 10% of what I actually bring but I'm honestly not too cold like I've had little bits where I've started to get a bit cold but I've still got some gloves to put on and I could still put on my raincoat if I did get even colder so hopefully I'll get good sleep I might try to get up for the sunrise but 
you never know if I'm having a good sleep. I'm probably just gonna sleep for a bit. Time to go to bed now, so I'll see you all in the morning. Good night. I just woke up, I had the best sleep. Been pretty on and off, but I just woke up. I thought the sun was gonna rise over there. But it's over there and that is amazing. That is so orange. <laughs> there you go, that's the tent. As you can see, it was just put up terribly, but like, it's so hard, like anywhere other than where I put the pegs at the moment. As you can see, even there wasn't perfect. That porch way was a bit further out, but because I couldn't get the peg in fully, it got pretty windy overnight and it blew off the peg and it was flapping around loads, so I just pulled it in a bit. But yeah, it was quite noisy in there, as you can imagine, because of how much sag was there. It was just flapping about all night. So I didn't get loads of sleep in total. Probably had about three hours, like, all split out. At least I'm up early in the morning. It's probably like pushing six o'clock now and I feel like up and ready to go. So I might as well just pack up. The sunrise is pretty much gone, but at least I got a bit of a sunrise because that was pretty cool waking up this morning. But there's the tent. Survived the night. Granted, it definitely wasn't set up well at all. It was very windy at some points last night, but this morning it's pretty much still compared to what it was like last night. Nevertheless, I still had a good time, so can't complain too much. Yeah, so as you can see, I was literally right on the summit, over 2,000 feet high. But I was actually pretty warm through the night. I definitely think the new sleeping pad made a difference. And when I did get to sleep, unlike other times, I didn't get a dead arm, so that's a good sign. Looks so cool over there though. Just like a big line of cloud. Obviously the sky is not too orange anymore. There you go, fully cleaned up now. Obviously left no trace. I'll tell you what though, I nearly did leave a trace. I was literally just about to go. I looked down and I just found a peg still in the floor. So good job I saw that because I'm already running low on pegs because I've got quite a few bent ones after last night. And mountains in the distance look so good with the sun just hitting them and the clouds sat on top of them. Honestly, putting the route as my home screen was such a good idea. The amount of time I usually spend clicking through my phone, unlocking it, to look at a picture I've taken of a route. Stick it as your home screen, and you just have to click one button, and it's right there. There's just something about walking completely alone. Not a person in sight. I've not actually walked past anyone on this walk at all. And it's just like amazing that I've not seen a person for well over 12 hours. It's an unusual feeling, you don't really get that anywhere else. That looks awesome looking down that valley. I'm quite looking forward to walking down here. I think it should be really nice. I still got quite a long way down here to go. I kind of like, didn't realise, like you never really realise how high you are because everything else is so big. I don't know where the path goes here. <laughs> I'm just gonna follow down next to the fence, I think. I've just nearly become a prisoner to the bogs at this late stage. It was not far off going over my ankle, wasn't that? I just didn't expect it. Literally just walking down there. It really is a strange area here. Like you've got like, this high mud. I don't know how it's formed like this. Really weird stuff is this. I don't know which way to go, really. What's this looking like? It feels pretty sturdy. I was worried for a second I might go sinking through it. I can't lie, I'm already pretty warm and the sun's not even out from behind the clouds yet. I mean, I've got a hoodie and a jacket on though, but I think I'm gonna have to take that off soon. There we go, that's much better. Now I've got my jackets off. So much more free and I'm not sweating to death. Looks really good looking over there. There's like a waterfall there, a little one there, a bit of a bigger one there, but I'm not gonna go to that today. That one's gonna have to be for another day because I'm gonna have to go uphill. And I don't really fancy walking uphill. I just want a nice, relaxing stroll through the valley. There you go, the sun's just about over the hill. And there's this nice little stream. 
honestly I'm looking forward to getting on that track over there because this has been a very boggy walk so it'll be a welcome change when I get onto a nice firm path that's looking back up to where I've just come down but look at this for a valley honestly you cannot beat a valley it feels so good and you feel so small just walking for a valley with steep hills either side honestly other than walking up a mountain and getting to the top walking for a valley is definitely second here we go the last wet section i have to deal with let's try not to fall over <laughs> there we go it should all be dry from now because i'm onto this track that's amazing just looking straight ahead Honestly, that's such a steep hill. The camera probably just doesn't do it justice at all, but it looks so good. I'm pretty sure that's like a little waterfall coming down up there. It's like a really unusual one though, because like, the way it wiggles down, they don't like this much water coming down it though. It's a lovely river the way it's coming down at so many different places. Wow, look at that for a view. I think Tarn Crag must be somewhere up there. Still have quite a long way to go. I'm kind of glad I set off early because look how far I have to go down here. Did not realise it was this far at all. So I've just got to walk down some trees and then I'm back to the car. So I might as well finish off the video here. So that's it, my first solo wild camp. And I did get a bit nervy on the night. The wind won't help in, the tent won't put up properly. And just whenever it's dark, you listen out and it always sounds like there's little footsteps but it's just your tent rustling but i did get out at one point and the stars were just absolutely amazing if you enjoyed the video don't forget to leave a like and drop a sub and if you want to watch me camping in the peak district for the first time click the screen now